Photosynthesis takes place inside of plant cells, primarily palisade cells, which is what's shown here. It occurs inside of an organelle called a chloroplast. Carbon dioxide and water enter the cell, and then through photosynthesis, glucose and oxygen are generated. Some of the glucose is going to be used for the growth of the plant, and it's going to make things like, for example, cellulose. Some of that glucose is going to be used in the process of respiration, which is there to generate ATP, which is the energy currency of organisms. Some of that oxygen is going to go and be released to the atmosphere, and some of the oxygen is going to be used for respiration, but it doesn't use all of the oxygen that it produces, and so there is still a release of oxygen to the atmosphere, which is why we have an oxygen-rich atmosphere on planet Earth for animals to breathe. Now, this process of respiration is there to release energy. And so you might kind of get the impression that plants create energy. This is not true. They require sunlight for this process. Sunlight is the energy source that's used, and it basically just converts it from light energy into chemical energy. The word equation is pretty simple. Just plug in those chemicals that we've already mentioned. Carbon dioxide and water goes to glucose plus oxygen. Sometimes we might add on some of the extra details like sunlight is used and also chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is just a pigment that's responsible for the absorption of the light and it's present inside of chloroplasts. Chemical equation, that's almost as simple as the word equation. The only thing is that you've got to know the chemical symbols for all of those things. And here it is right here. Go ahead, add on those extra details like sunlight and chlorophyll. And if you look at the whole thing a little bit more closely, you might notice that glucose, for example, on the right-hand side, this is C6H12O6, which means there are six carbon atoms present. Go over to the left-hand side, and we've got carbon dioxide, which only has one carbon atom. So the implication here is that we've created five carbon atoms out of nowhere. Obviously, that's not true. That's not possible. So it's a really good idea to go ahead and balance the equation. And the balanced chemical equation for photosynthesis looks like this. Let's look at a bit of exam help. Now then you could get asked a question, something like, explain how plants convert carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. This is a five mark question, it's obviously quite in depth, and it might be a little bit tricky to try and think, oh, how do I convert what I know about photosynthesis into some sort of a, a wordy answer? Well, let's look at what you might say. First of all, plants use energy from sunlight. Whenever you're describing photosynthesis, there's a good chance you're going to get a mark for discussing sunlight. Next, say how that sunlight is captured, and it's by chlorophyll. Now then, the question does not mention that photosynthesis is occurring, so there's probably a mark available for proving that you know this is about photosynthesis. And then, you might get a mark for mentioning the carbohydrate that's initially produced, which in this case is glucose. Now then, it requires carbon dioxide, but that's mentioned in the question, so it's unlikely you'd get a mark for that. But it doesn't mention how the carbon dioxide actually gets into the plant cells in the first place. Well, first it's got to enter the leaf, which is through those little holes called stomata. And then from the inside of the leaf, it diffuses into the cells. So there's another possible mark. And last, whenever you're talking about photosynthesis, throw in the chemical equation or the word equation. There's a good chance you're going to get awarded a mark for that. So, out of all of that, there's seven possible points you could say. You're certainly likely to get your five full marks for that.